Okay, let's get right into it. Blackheads. Mm -hmm. We've all been there, right, miss? Mm. That close up in the mirror, seeing those tiny dark spots, usually, you know, right there on your nose. It's a classic spot. Yeah, or maybe on your cheeks or uh, elsewhere even. It's just one of those really common skin things. A bit annoying, maybe. Definitely a common nuisance. And something you've probably wondered how to like actually get rid of effectively. So in this deep dive, we're tackling blackheads head on. Sounds good. We'll try and unravel what they really are uh, what causes them, and most importantly, what actually works to manage them. Yeah, it's interesting because they're so universal, but the biology behind them is pretty straightforward. We've been looking at the info shared by Dr. Mamina in her YouTube video. Right, the one called Blackheads on Your Nose. Here's how to remove them. Exactly that one. So our mission, so to speak, is to kind of distill that information down so you get a really clear picture of, well, what blackheads are and how to deal with them. Great. So let's start right at the beginning. What is a blackhead? Fundamentally, it's not just trap dirt, is it? I think a lot of people assume that. That's a really common misconception, but no, it's not dirt. Essentially, a blackhead is just a small pore that's gotten clogged up. Clogged with what though? It's a mix, basically. Excess oil, the technical term is sebum and dead skin cells. Think of it like a little flug forming in the opening of the pore. Okay, like a tiny traffic jam, got it. But then why the black color? That's the part I always wondered about, if it's not dirt. Yeah, that's the key bit. The darkness isn't grime at all. It's actually down to chemistry, a process called oxidation. Oxidation, like rust. Sort of similar, yeah. When that mix of sebum and dead skin cells sitting in the open pore gets exposed to the air, it reacts with oxygen. Ah. And that reaction causes it to darken and turn black or dark brown. It's a bit like how, you know, if you cut an apple and leave it out, it turns brown. Right. Okay. That makes total sense now. So whiteheads are different because... Because they're also clogged pores, but the top is closed off. There's usually a thin layer of skin over the clog. So no air gets in. Exactly. No air, no oxidation. So they stay white or yellowish. Fascinating. Okay. And it really does seem like blackheads just love setting up shop on the nose. Is there a reason for that specific location being such a, well, hot spot? Absolutely. Your nose and also often your forehead and chin, what people call the T-zone. Mm -hmm, the T-zone. Those areas just naturally have a higher concentration of sebaceous glands compared to other parts of your face or body. And those are the oil glands, right? Correct. Sebaceous glands secrete sebum. So you simply have more oil being produced in the pores on your nose. And more oil means a higher chance of those pores getting clogged up. Precisely. More raw material for those little plugs to form. Okay. Now who gets these? Is it mainly a teenager thing? I definitely associate them with my teenage years. Well, it's certainly true that they're very common in teens and young adults. That's largely because hormone levels, particularly androgens, ramp up during puberty, which boosts oil production significantly. Right. Hormones. But um, it's definitely not just teens. Blackheads can happen at pretty much any age. Hormone levels can fluctuate throughout life for various reasons, impacting oiliness. Okay. And the source material also mentions something about gender differences. Do men get them more or women? Yeah, there seems to be a tendency, generally speaking, for men to experience blackheads a bit more often. Any idea why? It's often linked back to hormones. Mm. Again, men typically have higher levels of androgens, leading to more semen production overall. Plus, uh, sometimes skincare habits might differ, potentially playing a role too, though that's more variable. Sure, okay, good to know. Now, something else that caught my eye was the connection to damaged skin. Sun damage specifically, how does that fit in? Ah, uh, yes, that's quite important. Chronic sun exposure can actually damage and weaken the collagen in your skin over time. And collagen is like the skin's scaffolding. Exactly, it provides structure and support, including around the walls of your pores. When that collagen structure gets damaged and weakens, the pore walls can become a bit less firm, maybe even stretch out slightly. Making them bigger targets for clogging? Sort of, yeah, the opening might become wider, or the structure less able to sort of push things out effectively. Mm -hmm. This can make them more prone to collecting that sebum and dead skin cell mixture. Wow, so yet another reason to be really diligent about sunscreen every single day. Absolutely critical. Yeah. And then there was that more um, severe condition mentioned as well, Favre-Rakusho syndrome, that sounded pretty intense. Yeah, what was that exactly? It's a condition where you see lots and lots of blackheads 
and often whiteheads too, typically clustered on the sides of the upper face, like near the eyes and temples. Okay. It's most commonly seen in uh, older individuals, particularly those with a long history of heavy sun exposure, and often in smokers too. So it's like an extreme example of that damage accumulating. Pretty much. It really highlights how chronic damage, especially from the sun, can significantly impact pore structure and lead to widespread persistent blackheads. The good news mentioned was that even for severe cases like that, treatments like prescription retinoids or isotretinoin can still help manage it. Right. Okay, so we've got a good handle on what they are and sort of the risk factors. Now the big question, prevention and treatment. How do we actually deal with them? The source broke it down into three key areas, didn't it? Exactly. The core strategy really revolves around three main pillars. First, managing that excess oil buildup. Second, dealing with the buildup of dead skin cells, which are mostly made of a protein called keratin. Okay. Oil and dead skin cells. And third, supporting the actual health and strength of the pore walls themselves. If you tackle those three things, you're generally covering the main bases. Right. Let's dig into that first one then, tackling the oil. What kind of products or ingredients are we talking about here? So the aim here is either to use things that absorb the extra oil sitting on the skin and in the pores, or ingredients that can actually help decrease oil production over time. Okay. And for actually getting into the pore and dealing with the oil already there, salicylic acid is a real star player. Salicylic acid, BHA, right? Beta hydroxy acid. That's the one. What makes it so good for blackheads is that it's oil soluble. Ah, so it can mix with the oil. Precisely. It can penetrate down into the oily environment inside the pore and help dissolve or loosen that clog of sebum and dead skin cells. It basically helps to kind of unglue things. That sounds ideal. Were there specific product examples given for people wanting ideas? Yeah, Dr. Menina mentioned a few good ones, things like the Inkylist Alicylic Acid Cleanser, the La Roche-Posay Afaclar Salicylic Acid Serum, and also Paula's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. Okay, useful starting points. Those are pretty well-known brands too. They are widely available options that really harness that power of salicylic acid. What about things like clay masks? I feel like those are often recommended for oily skin and blackheads. Yes, clay masks are definitely helpful for the oil absorbing part of the equation. Clays like kaolin and bentonite and often charcoal too are very porous and work like sponges. So they just soak up the oil? Pretty much, yeah. They draw out excess oil and impurities from the surface of the skin and from within the pore openings. The video mentioned the Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay, that very popular one you mix yourself, and also Kiel's Rare Earth Clay Mask as examples. Right, and um, for cases where the oiliness is really persistent and causing a lot of issues, there was a mention of systemic treatments. That sounds more serious. Yes, for individuals with really significant ongoing high oil production that leads to severe or very stubborn blackheads, sometimes topical treatments aren't quite enough. So what then? That's when consulting a dermatologist becomes really important. They might discuss prescription options like isotretinoin, which used to be known mainly as Accutane, or sometimes a medication called spironolactone, often used for hormonal acne in women. And these work differently. They do. They work from the inside out to actually reduce the amount of sebum your glands produce overall. Mm. But they are potent medications with potential side effects, so it's definitely a doctor-led discussion. Understood. Okay, so that covers managing oil. What about the second point, dealing with the dead skin cell buildup, the keratin, and also supporting the pore walls? It seemed like those two were often linked in the explanation. They often are discussed together, and rightly so because many of the ingredients that are effective at encouraging the shedding of dead skin cells mm. also happen to benefit the structure and integrity of the pore wall. And the key players here are... Retinoids. They're absolute powerhouses in this area. Retinoids. We hear that word all the time in skincare. Why are they so good for blackheads specifically? Well, they work in a couple of really crucial ways. First, they significantly speed up skin cell turnover. Meaning the skin sheds dead cells faster. Exactly. So those dead cells are less likely to hang around, build up, and contribute to clogging the pores in the first place. It keeps things moving. Okay, that makes sense. And the second way? The second big benefit is their ability to stimulate collagen production over the long term. And as we talked about earlier, strong collagen means better support for the pore walls. Ah, so it helps keep the pores sort of tighter and less likely to stretch or clog? 
Precisely. It addresses both the shedding aspect and the structural aspect. It's a really comprehensive approach. So what kinds of retinoids are we talking about? Prescription over the counter? Both, actually. The information covered prescription strength options like tretinoin, which is very effective but can be irritating for some, and also readily available over the counter retinoids like adipoline. Adipoline, like yeah. Differin Gel. Exactly. Differin Gel is the most well known adipoline product. It's now OTC in many places. The video also mentioned examples like Rosi Retinol Correction Night Cream, which uses retinol, another type of retinoid. And for sensitive skin, gentler options like the Cerave Resurfacing Retinol Serum were suggested as a starting point. Good to know there are options depending on your skin's tolerance. Okay, so retinoids are key. What else helps with exfoliation and maybe pore structure? AHAs were mentioned too, right? Alpha hydroxy acids. Yes, AHAs like glycolic acid and lactic acid are primarily excellent chemical exfoliants. How do they work differently from BHAs like salicylic acid? AHAs are water-soluble, so they mainly work on the surface of the skin. They dissolve the glue holding dead skin cells together, making them easier to slough off. This definitely helps prevent buildup that can lead to blackheads. Do they help with pore walls too? Not directly in the same way retinoids boost collagen, but by keeping the surface exfoliated and promoting healthy cell turnover, they contribute to clearer pores and just overall healthier skin function, which indirectly supports pore health. Some studies suggest they might have some collagen boosting effects too, but exfoliation is their main game for this purpose. Gotcha. Any examples there? Fruit enzymes were mentioned as another gentle exfoliating option. And a specific product example using AHAs was the Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Daily Peel Pads, which combine AHAs and BHAs. Ah, those are popular. Okay, and there was one other ingredient highlighted specifically for pore wall integrity, wasn't there? Something less common. Lentil seed extract. Yes, that was an interesting one. It's not an ingredient you hear about every day. No. But the source material indicated that lentil seed extract has shown some promise in research for helping to reinforce the structure around the pore opening, supporting that integrity. Huh. Any products with that? The specific one mentioned was Philosophy's Purity Pore Minimizing Serum, noted as containing it and having positive feedback. So maybe one to look out for if pore structure is a big concern. Interesting. Okay, so we've got oil control, exfoliation, and pore support covered with ingredients like salicylic acid, retinoids, AHAs, clay. What else? Hi. Were there other factors discussed that influence blackheads? I think diet came up. Yes, diet was mentioned as a potential contributing factor for some individuals. How so? The suggestion was that diets high in sugar and potentially dairy products could, for some people, make both the skin cells and the sebum itself a bit more sticky. Sticky? What does that mean in this context? It means they might not shed or flow as easily as they should. If dead skin cells are stickier, they might clump together more readily inside the pore instead of shedding away cleanly. If sebum is thicker or stickier, it might not flow out of the pore as well. Uh, okay, so it kind of gums up the works, potentially. That's the idea, yeah. Interfering with that natural process of shedding and flow, making clogs more likely, it's not definitive for everyone, but something to be aware of if you notice patterns. Right. So maybe cutting back on sugary snacks or excessive dairy could potentially help your skin clear up, worth considering. It might be for some, yeah. And beyond diet, the discussion also touched on some uh, more intensive professional treatments. You mean like things you get done at a clinic or spa, like chemical peels? Exactly. Chemical peels use stronger concentrations of acids than you typically use at home to exfoliate the top layers of skin more deeply. This can be very effective for clearing out existing blackheads and improving skin texture overall. And what about extractions, like physically squeezing them out? Extractions, usually done by an esthetician during a facial, involve manually removing the contents of the blackhead. They definitely provide an immediate improvement in appearance. But do they last? Well, that's the key point. Emphasized extractions are great for a quick fix, but unless you're also using a good daily skincare routine that addresses the causes the oil, the cell build up the pores are likely just going to fill up again. Maintenance is crucial. Right, makes sense. And for really stubborn problems, or if maybe past blackheads have left pores looking enlarged or scarred, were there other options? Yes, for more significant texture issues or visible scarring, treatments like microneedling or certain types of resurfacing laser treatments were mentioned. How did those work? They work by creating controlled microinjury to the skin, which stimulates the body's natural healing process, including collagen production. 
This can help improve skin texture, reduce the appearance of enlarged pores, and minimize scarring over time. Sounds quite involved. They are more intensive procedures, yes. And the advice was very clear. Always consult with a board-certified dermatologist before considering these treatments. They can assess your skin and determine if these are appropriate and safe for you. Absolutely. Good advice. Okay, so before we wrap up, just to quickly hit the prevention highlights again, the key takeaways for stopping blackheads before they start or keeping them bay. Yep. Three main things stood out. Number one, sunscreen. Every single day, rain or shine and reapply it. Sun damage makes blackheads worse, period. Got it. Sunscreen is non-negotiable. Number two, consider your diet. Pay attention to whether high sugar or dairy intake seems to correlate with your breakouts. It might be a factor. Okay, diet awareness. And number three, build a consistent skincare routine that includes those powerhouse ingredients we talked about. Specifically, incorporating something like a retinoid and a salicylic acid product regularly. Those are your main preventative workhorses. Perfect. Okay, so to sort of boil it all down from this deep dive, it really sounds like tackling blackheads needs a multi-pronged approach, doesn't it? You need to manage the oil salicylic acid clays. You need to manage the dead skin cells and support the pore structure retinoids, maybe AHAs. And you need to be mindful of those bigger picture things like sun protection and possibly diet. That's a spot on summary. It's really about understanding why they're forming the excess oil, the sticky cells, the weakened pore walls, and then using the right tools consistently to counteract those issues. Well, I definitely feel like I understand them much better now. Hopefully you listening feel the same way. It's, uh, it's actually quite empowering to know there are concrete things you can do about something so common. Definitely. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your skin. So thinking about all this, what's maybe one small practical change you think someone listening could realistically add to their routine based on everything we've discussed that might actually make a surprising difference over time? Just something to ponder. Hmm, that's a great question to leave people with. Maybe it's finally committing to that daily sunscreen or perhaps trying out a gentle retinoid a couple of times a week. Even small consistent steps can add up.